Welcome everyone. Today we are going to look at a different type of classifier called the nearest neighbor classifier. So the nearest neighbor classifier, how it works. The classifier identifies an object based on its neighbor. For example, consider that we have a group of fish over here and we have a group of snakes over here. And in the middle of these two we have some an unknown object. And all I know that this object has either to be a fish or a snake, but I don't know that who it is as it is unlabeled. Now based on this nearest neighbor classifier, all that I have to do is that to classify this unknown object in either of these two groups. So let's start by looking at its nearest neighbor. So if I look at its nearest neighbor, it turns out to be a snake and well based on that probably I might think that since its nearest neighbor is a snake it is also probably a snake well it's not advisable to stop like that we can also go and see if the its two nearest neighbor which turns out to be a fish and a snake now this turns out to be a tie so let's go ahead and see another neighbor and it turns out that it's three ne nearest neighbor includes two snake and a fish and going in this way its four nearest neighbor includes three snakes and one fish and so based on this data that we discovered right now <coughs> this object since three of its four neighbor is a snake and one of them is a fish then this object is probably a snake and not a fish so this is the basic idea of the nearest neighbor classifier now consider a data set. In this data set we have the information of two numerical variables height and weight and each of these observations are labeled either obese or overweight. Now understand one thing that in the multivariate analysis each example is represented as a data point in d-dimensional space where d is the number of attributes. For example, we have heights and weight over here, so this observation, each of these observations, OBs, OBs over weights, they can be represented uh, as, as a point in the two-dimensional plane. So in this data set, we got six observations which are labeled, at, labeled as OBs and the rest of the six are labeled as overweight. Now, if I am given a new data containing height and weight and I am asked to classify that it's an obese or overweight. Now here understand and assume that we do not know how to calculate the body mass index and all that we have to do we have to classify based on the information given in the data set and we have got no extra informations and how to, we don't know how to calculate the body mass index. So one thing we can do is that we can plot these points visually and let's see that how this visual data looks like and where this point is located in that two-dimensional space. So this is the visualization of the above of the previous data set and see that each of these points actually represents an observations with its uh, this graph has its x-axis as heights in feet and its y-axis at weights and these observations are those observations uh, in the data set. Each of these gray dots represents an overweight person and each of these yellow dots actually represents an obese person. Now see amidst of this we have a red circle and which is not colored as yellow or gray but is unlabeled our new data set and all that I have to do is that we, we, we have to classify it as either obese or overweight and we have to do it based on the nearest neighbor so we will start looking for the nearest neighbor that who the nearest the nearest neighbor of this new data set and we see that it's actually an obese Well, the nearest neighbor to this new data is an obese. So, 
based on this information probably we can think that this it's likely that this new data set can also be labeled as OBs but before we take any conclusion let's go one step ahead and see that what what see that what uh, the two nearest neighbor includes so if I consider the two nearest neighbor we can see that it includes one obese and one overweight and so it's a tie so it can be either one of them or an obese or an overweight to avoid the confusion let's go one step ahead and see look at the three nearest neighbor and if I see that that three nearest neighbor it includes two overweights and one obese indicating that it's this new observation is more likely to be overweight compared to obese and if I go one step forward for 4NN I start looking at the four nearest neighbor and I see that now it includes three overweights and one obese and thus beating completely the probability of being obese and so now I can classify this new data set the new observations as overweight based on his four nearest neighbor so this is how it works now let us let us look at the KNN algorithm the KNN algorithm can be summarized as uh, follows a positive integer K is specified along with a new sample we select k entries in our database which are closest to the new sample we find the most common classification of these entries and finally this is the classification we give to the new sample so this is the algorithm by which the k nearest neighbor procedure the concept works Now an important question and most necessary question that we must ask here is that how to choose the value of k. Now if k is too small then the nearest neighbor classifier may be susceptible to overfitting because of the noise in the training data. For example look at this figure we can, uh, we can clearly see that there are mainly two types of object the one represented by these yellow dots and the other represented by these orange squares and it happened that due to noise in the sample some uh, one of it, this orange square got misclassified as these yellow dots and also that it happens that the new data new observation represented by this star happened to fall very near to this noisy sample only and if I have considered only the one nearest neighbor the one in n then it got misclassified the new sample got misclassified as a yellow dot but I can clearly see that if I take two three or four nearest neighbor then it's more likely that the it's more likely that the new data will be classified as an orange square on the other hand if K is too large the nearest neighbor classifier may misclassify the test instant because its list of nearest neighbor may include data points that are located far from its neighbor. Usually a value between 5 to 10 is taken as a reasonable value of k. The k, -n -n, the k nearest neighbor classifier is also known as a lazy learner. Now there are mainly two types of learner. One is an eager learner and one is a lazy learner. Uh, classifiers such as logistic regression model, decision tree and rule based classifier are all the examples of eager learner because they are designed to learn a model that maps the input attribute as soon as the training data is available. 
Whereas the lazy learner such as KNN classifier delays the process of modeling the training data until it is needed to classify the test example. We have seen in the K nearest neighbor classifier problems that it actually does not involve a model. So we do, do not feed the data to build a model and a uh, generalized model that when given a new test data uses all its experience and expertise to predict the result. It delays the procedure, it waits until uh, it is needed to classify the test examples. There are multiple applications of these K nearest neighbor classifier concepts um, like credit rating and multiple and many classification problems. And one of the most important, one of the very important uh, place where it plays a very good role is in imputation of missing values. So in the upcoming videos, we are going to, going to see that how we can use this, the concept of KNN for the imputation of missing values. So hope you've enjoyed. Thank you. Bye. Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to study the imputation of missing value using simple linear regression. Suppose that the variable that contains the missing value is a numeric variable. Now consider the following data set. For example, in this data set, the variable y is a numeric variable that contains three missing values. And all we are going to do is that to find out, identify the most correlated variable present in the data set or some other data set and then fit a regression model of y on that variable and predict for this missing value. So all that we are going to do here is that we are going to find the correlation between x and y, we are going to find the correlation between y and z and we are going to find the correlation between z and w. And suppose that we have found out that the correlation between x and y is greater than the y and z and z and w, then all I am going to do is that fit a regression model of y on x, estimate these parameters a and b and I can estimate, I can predict for this missing value. For example, y6 equals to a cap plus b cap x6 y7 equals to a cap plus b cap x7 and y9 equals to a cap plus b cap x9. So this is the idea of using simple linear regression to predict for the missing values. Uh, it's not necessary that we should only restrict our ideas to the simple linear regression. We can also use the concept of multiple linear regression models and predict for the missing values if we can identify such predictors. The next missing value imputation method that we are going to study is called the KNN imputations and before we do so we will get a little idea about what this the what the concept of KNN is and so in the coming videos we will discuss the concept of KNN or the K nearest neighbor. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.